land. And these are all the parties involved in the trade. Clippers also getting a first and a second round draft pick. You see Tobias Harris, Avery Bradley, Obama Magnanovich also headed out of town to L.A. Well, it's Fast Break Monday here on NBA TV. Welcome to the Auto Trader pregame show. You know the trio, the legend, Isaiah Thomas, the coach of the year, Sam Mitchell, and yours truly, Chris Miles Nuggets and the Celtics will tip off at the top of the hour. We'll get you ready for that game and also catch you, get you up to speed with all the other games around the association. But the Blake Griffin trade is what we're talking about right now. And Brent Barry, he's going to be on the call between the Pistons and the Cavaliers. What's up, Brent? <laughs> What's happening, Scooter? How's it going? Uh, we, we welcome him to the show now. Yeah, I'm wondering uh, if, if Sam and Isaiah have brought up the business of basketball because there, there we go, uh, right in the thick of it. And, uh, yeah, tomorrow Pistons against the Cavs with the news of uh, of uh, the Blake Griffin trade dominating uh, both NBA TV and, uh, and, and social media, as I'm sure you guys are well aware. And here you thought all the drama would be with the Cleveland Cavaliers, and now you get some with the Detroit Pistons. Yeah, you know, I, I think Isaiah was making mention uh, about the fact that uh, Detroit has really found themselves in this position because of the fact that the, the drafts over the course of the last four or five seasons for them uh, have really not been players who have flourished within the system. And they're at a point now where uh, I think Coach Van Gundy and, and maybe the management is looking at, we've got to take a chance on a guy that we know exactly what he's going to give to us, um, try to take that talent that Blake Griffin is and uh, make it complimentary. I, I guess that's the one good thing, Zeke, about this is the idea that Blake Griffin's skills are quite complimentary. He, he passes the ball. He's become a much more uh, efficient outside shooter from the three-point line. Forget about mid-range. He's more than proven himself from that area. Uh, but now all of a sudden, if Blake Griffin's allowed to run uh, the point guard position and handle the ball a lot more, there can be some creative things that they can do uh, with, with their bigs. Yeah, and, and, you know, no no arguing, you know, Griffin's skill level. Um, you know, when you look at he and Drummond together, uh, you know, tied in the middle, you, you got, you know, close to 300 million tied up in that position. And, and Brent, I was just making a point that right now the league is, it's heavily driven by, by the perimeter players, by the point guard play in terms of the three-point shooting. And Sam made the excellent point in, in terms of, you know, with, with the money that's tied up at the four and five spot with Griffin and Drummond, can they be creators? Can they inspire? Can they help other players become better? that are going to be their perimeter players. I mean, that that's the gamble that, that you're making right now. And, uh, you know, when you, again, when you look across the league, the top teams, their best players are the point guards, and the point guards are running the league right now, not the big men. Yeah, I don't want to take anything away from what it is that Reggie Jackson potentially can, can add to the roster with his ability to get into the paint. But, you know, when you look at some of the numbers with Detroit this year, they're not really a, a pick-and-roll man team, and that's something they have to develop. That chemistry is going to take some time. And you said it, Zeke, they really don't have any perimeter shooting. And I'm wondering if they're trying to be the East Coast version of what the New Orleans Pelicans have tried to do with having Cousins and Anthony Davis together and the, the way that they had complimented each other, started to play some good basketball with Holiday out on the perimeter. Um, but th this team, this team does not have a lot of uh, other guys they can go to at the guard position, and it's going to be interesting for the rest of the season how they manipulate minutes. If Luke Kennard is going to be uh, allowed to play the two guard and get some experience, they're three games out of the East spot, and I'm just wondering if all of a sudden Luke Kennard gets some minutes, not, not something that Stan Van Gundy is used to doing, divvy out minutes for a young player, but that might be the position that they're in, and then get Reggie Jackson back from his injury and just try to make a run to get themselves into the playoffs because this move is a, is the, the payoff for them is they got to get into the playoffs with this kind of move. It's got to be worth that to them for this season. Brent, when you look at this move, and I agree with you, does this put the Pistons in the playoff? Does this make them a playoff team in the East? And if it doesn't, what does this say for Stan and his staff? Because 
it seems like they're going all in. And my biggest concern, I feel like they had to do this deal. They had to do something. But now they're thin. If if Blake Griffin missed any time because of any kind of injury, can they can they rebound from that? Can they hold on until he gets back? Yeah, that's the swing. That's the swing that they're taking, Sam. Uh, just, just thinking that this is going to work and get them to the playoffs, at least from the outside looking in. And maybe tomorrow, you know, with us doing the game, we can, we can hear from Shane himself and, and maybe some of the brass about the reasons behind this move. And, I mean, we, we know this, guys. It's it's not over. You know, the Clippers have a lot more moves that they're going to make. you got to think that DeAndre Jordan and Lou Williams soon will be traded as well. Does that mean the Pistons are sitting on Reggie Jackson and waiting for him to return? Or are they taking calls as it was rumored that potentially they were looking at Kimball Walker and making a swap out? And I, I just wonder how many other things they have in consideration. But for right now, getting a proven star in Blake Griffin with the hope that he stays healthy for the next few years, it's, it's something that Detroit can hang their hat on, having an established guy like that in that uniform. What number is he going to wear, Zeke? 32 is retired here. That's right. He can't get Rip Hamilton's number. Yeah, and, really? and yeah. Well, I don't know. I just know the original bad boys, we don't take our numbers off the Raptors. Absolutely. You better now, not. Now, now Rip, Rip, she, you know, they, they may want to let their numbers come down. You know, Rip, Rip may want to let him wear his number like Chauncey is letting Reggie wear his. All I know is the bad boys, I was up in the Raptors, retired forever. Chauncey, Rip, Respect. get your stuff together, man. <laughs> I want my daddy records back. Well, we'll see tomorrow. It's interesting trade, guys, and, and the next week I think is going to prove to be pretty wild. All right, Brent Barry, enjoy players only on Tuesday. You're on the call between the Cavaliers and the Pistons. Appreciate it, my friend. Thanks, guys. Well, apparently players around the league are taking notice. There's Aaron Gordon. You know him for the Orlando Magic. Blake and Dre on the same team is tough. Well, clearly for him because he's going to have to defend those two guys. Well, yeah, I mean, exactly. You know, again, those are the big guys that are talking, right? And, and again, no arguing the talent. The talent, when you talk about Griffin and Drummond, they're exceptional talents. But the way the game is being affected today by the three ball and on the perimeter, that's where the game is at today. So that, that's where Golden State is having success at. That's where Houston's having success at. And this experiment has been tried before with the Clippers. They had Chris Paul, they had, they had Jordan, and they had Griffin. There's no Chris Paul here now in Detroit. So how are you going to play and how are you going to be effective with these two? Now, think about this. Brent says something. Are they trying to mirror what New Orleans is doing with DeMarcus Cousin and Anthony Davis? Okay, this is the difference. Regardless of what you may think of DeMarcus Cousin, look at the skill level. Can shoot the three. Can put it on the four. Can play point center. Can pass the ball. Can post up. Has a mid-range game. And AD can do the same thing. Now, Blake Griffin can do all those things. DeAndre Jordan. Can he pass? Can he play out on the perimeter and make plays and things like that? And then second, who are you going to put around them? Yeah. Who's going to – because if I'm playing Detroit right now, I'm trapping Blake Griffin every time. I'm going to make him get rid of the ball, and I'm going to make some of them young guys, the unproven guys, make jump shots from the perimeter. That's And I'm not going to 